All right, so we are back with a fourth episode, I guess. Uh, yeah, because we'll 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 be uploading this um after our third one, which we literally just got <laughs> done recording. Yeah, well, like about half an hour ago. What man? What has it already been half an hour? <laughs> like 15, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, let me do the intro song. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> What's the podcast name again? Oh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the poor Reichs. Da, 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 da. We're poor. <laughs> You added the weird part to it. The weird, because the other one you, you just did poor. Yeah. <laughs> this is a this is an intro that my, after we finished recording our previous um, episode, my sister was like, "Oh man, I want to make an intro." And we talked a little bit about that. It, just a few minutes having some fun talking about that. And then she we did a quick recording of the song that she came up with in her head. She didn't want to forget it. Because it was that good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you forget things. Um, and, and so that version that she just did right there was a little bit more advanced. That one was slightly advanced. That one was, uh, the poor Rikes, this is our intro song, da 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 poor, <laughs> or something like that. Almost exactly, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, we, we did a really long episode, it was an hour and a half by the time we finished it. Yeah, well, so we thought we'd give you guys a break and come back. <laughs> <laughs> No, and and we kept wanting to talk more though. Uh, this is kind of like what we've done in the past when we would, and we talked about this when we want to just chat and just chill and hang out and whatever. So, <clears throat> damn. It. Um. So we had a couple things that she wanted to talk about. Um. What was the f oh? So there were t bacon and how we ended up initially in how it, yes, yes. <laughs> initially that was the main uh, conversation she wanted to have. Uh, so let's start with bacon. <laughs> so I was craving bacon. <laughs> uh, we don't cook. We don't cook here. We don't bother. It's frozen dinners. I, when I, uh, I don't know, I, I was cooking and then it got really hot and then I got out of the habit of cooking. Mm -hmm. And, um, and also at the same time I was like being really sick and like stuff like that. So I just had no energy to cook. And I am way too lazy to cook, even though I do love, I think cooking is rewarding. Yeah. I I actually like the act of cooking. It's just, I get, mm -hmm. I get so tired so fast. Uh, it, it takes, it's so easy. It like, it's such an easy thing to do, but it does take that effort yeah. and energy. Yeah. And your I, mental state. I spent seven minutes washing dishes today, so we only have half of the dishes left <laughs> in the sink. <laughs> so um, we haven't had a clean fork in like a month. Well, I don't. I, I use plastic, so whatever. Um, I I'm like destroying the environment. I like <laughs> I like real forks. <laughs> um, so uh, the bacon. Oh, bacon. So I was craving bacon. I haven't made bacon. I think probably in at least like a decade. Um, yeah, yeah. And we love bacon, too. And we love bacon. So we've eaten bacon at other places and ordered in bacon and shit like that. But, um, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on bacon. But I had, I had thought I had remembered, uh, <laughs> I don't think this will be interesting to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, go ahead, I'm interested. But I thought, <laughs> I thought I had remembered seeing some sort of prepackaged, like, pre-cooked bacon or something like that. I knew I had gotten bacon jerky before, but the thing about bacon jerky is that it's, there's so much fat and it just is cold, it just doesn't taste right. So, it tastes good, but it's like the texture is low. Uh, so, I wanted, so I googled pre-cooked bacon and I found it at Aldi uh, for a dozen pieces for $2.89, I think. Aldi is a... Grocery store, grocery store, yeah, <clears throat> and uh, and I was so I I was like two dollars and eighty nine cents for a uh, like twelve pieces of bacon. It's probably not going to taste very good. So I looked for a review, mm. and it actually said that like it was a seven seven or eight out of ten. I was like, that's decent. Like that's restaurant style. I, I like, think that's a pretty fair score. So, uh, yeah, it's like and honestly, so I so I got a few packages a couple of days ago. And I uh, liked it so much that we just got uh, 10 packages today. Uh, so <laughs> with the ones we've eaten, it, uh, we have 11 left. I came, I came into the kitchen and I saw a stack of freaking <laughs> boxes of bacon. And I was like, oh, she must really like this. Well, okay, so here's the other thing is that they last. So first of all, you, you heat them up in 30 seconds, oh, right? 20 seconds. 20 seconds for half the box. Quick, yeah. yeah. Um, and... Also, they last outside of refrigeration for over a year. 
because they're not supposed to expire. Oh, it said July 2021. I guess we're in 2021. So six months. <laughs> so six months. Uh, and so like that can literally last us six months. It won't. It'll last us a week at the most. Probably. But it could last if you wanted it. <laughs> Technically, you don't have to refrigerate it. So it's not taking up space in your refrigerator. Even if it did, those are pretty small. Yeah. So, so but yeah, a... there is a plus, I guess. We wouldn't have to worry about it. We don't have anything in the fridge, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but it is nice if you do have a full fridge. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but also, it's just so cheap. And Jeremy's yeah. like, it's not cheap. And I'm like, it's so cheap. Well, the funny thing to me about that is now, I like, I'm... um. I don't think it's overpriced at all. I generally speaking, uh, you know, twelve pieces of bacon for three dollars it does not sound overly expensive at all to me or anything. But I don't think, oh, that's an incredible deal. <laughs> it's like half the price of a regular. If you were to bacon. get it, yeah. yeah. No, so, um, but she said this before too, and I was like, well, yeah, I've, I remember. Now it's been a while since I got like a regular package of bacon, but I remember those regular packages of bacon would have a lot of bacon. It would it'd be like at least 24 slices and, mm. and long slices. Those were the ones I would see. I don't think so. they'd be 20. I think it was still a dozen. The only thing is that when they're uncooked, they're heavier and bigger because mm -hmm. they shrink when they cook. So I, that I'm not familiar with. I just remember like seeing bigger packages. Yeah. So, so I don't are... think it's a rip off or anything. Yeah. I just don't, I'm not like, oh my gosh, but I, I think I would be if I did see... If I went to the store and I were to see the same price or, or not the same price, but other packages for more. And I'd be like, oh, she was right. So I don't doubt you or anything. I just like off the top of my head, when I, when I, when I, especially when I see a stack of boxes of bacon on our, in our, in our kitchen. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, I'm not thinking $3 for 12 slices of bacon. I'm thinking all of these boxes cost way more than $3. <laughs> yeah. I was all counting them. I was like, three, 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 three. <laughs> So it's like uh, thirty dollars worth of bacon, but uh, it's a good snack. It's, I, it is worth it. Like, and here's the thing: so if you've never had all these, <laughs> all these uh, bacon, it's uh, like if you've ever had bacon at Denny's or IHOP, it's like that. It's very thin. Don't say IHOP. Oh my gosh, you want to talk about PTSD? IHOP for <laughs> me is a killer, man. You remember, right? I know. You it was like cafeteria. Oh eggs. god, yeah. no, never I, again. I never. And and then the last time you ordered from IHOP, the the omelet I got, uh -huh. not worth half the price that it was. It cost. Yeah. It was horrible. All you wanted on it was cheese. It was still horrible. <laughs> Did you look at it? I sent them. No. A, I tweeted it. I sent a picture. I tweeted a picture of this omelet that IHOP brought us. It was ten <laughs> fucking dollars, dude. Uh, no, no, no. But their New York cheesecake pancakes are so good. Okay, yeah. This the, the kind of funny thing is like sometimes you you go to these places, all these different fast food restaurants or restaurants or whatever, and some of their menu is really terrible. But then like something else on the menu is really excellent, you know. Um, but no, I'm I am I have not been a fan of IHOP for a really long time, and the omelet did not help at all. And I never I, I tweeted it out. I tweeted a message of like, "What are you looking at?" Oh, I want to see how long we've been talking about bacon. Eight minutes. <laughs> you must be very interested if you're still listening to this <laughs> podcast right now. We do. I mean, you know, it is a fun thing to talk about. Sort of. I know it's not like super. Whatever, I mean, it's just something we're chatting about, you know. If you don't like cooking your own we bacon, we will be getting because you can cook other... your own bacon in the microwave, but it takes eight minutes and it's so splattery. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so this, like, you put a paper towel on the bottom, put six pieces of bacon, put another paper towel on the top, <laughs> go twenty seconds, and in twenty seconds, you literally have twenty hot, seconds, and it comes out like as if you just cooked, cooked this fresh, yeah. not burnt. Yeah. It's like crispy slash chewy. That actually is the most impressive part about it. Twenty yeah. seconds, like. Yeah. I'm impressed by that. I really am. Yeah. I, I'm I'm vastly more impressed by that than the price for the box. You know, I don't like I said. I don't think it's a rip off. I just I'm not super impressed by it. But I would did 20 seconds and it comes out like as if we just cooked this bacon. Yeah, I mean, because here's the thing: if we ordered out um, like breakfast or whatever, we'd have to put the, the bacon in, in, in the mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. we'd have to put the bacon yeah. in the uh, in the microwave for 20 seconds anyway just yeah. to get it hot it again. Would definitely get here cold. Yeah. <clears throat> okay so no and i mean i get that too i, I think you know you're catching the clock and but it, i i've had fun to talk about it and and thinking about the ihop thing too now let me quickly say for it because like look man the first time my first bad experience with ihop now i remember when we were young really young i remember how young but much younger um ihop to me i don't know about you but if you remember this way but ihop 
to me, when we were younger, was a fancy restaurant. Oh yeah, it was a, it was more expensive than so this all tells the places. You how poor we, we are. Yeah, <laughs> well, and also different times. You know, yeah, times do change. Uh, restaurants. Do I don't change. think IHOP has ever been fancy. Oh, it was okay. Yeah. I've always thought of IHOP as, as fancy in comparison okay. to the other places we have been. Because you have so. uh, metal. It was an actual metal, restaurant. Metal silverware. Yeah. You sit down. They bring your food to yeah. you. Yeah. Not like McDonald's and such. You know, you get a tray of food and whatever and. Yeah, you go, yeah, you put in your order and then you go pick up your food and then you take it to a table. There's nobody coming in to clear your I table was when much you're done. Yeah. than that, yeah. Um, so my first, now, when we were younger, like, my, I always thought IHOP was, you know, my teenagers, I always thought of it as, like, a fancy restaurant. Um, <laughs> and including when I went out with high school friends, like, we would go to IHOP, you know, and I never realized back then that it was, they went there because it was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> to them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, to them. Yeah, uh, it was never cheap to us. This is why we called the podcast The Poor Rice, by the way. <laughs> so, um, I always thought it was a fancy restaurant, even when I went with high school friends. Like, it was, like, the nice place to go. Like, I mean, there was another restaurant we went to um, when I was in a church group uh, as well. But but me and Crystal had been there a few times. Uh, it was BJ's. Was it BJ's? Oh, I love BJ's. It was BJ's, right? That's where I ordered from last night, the French. The French okay, no, then it wasn't BJ's. What was the classic restaurant in, like, La Crescenta? Remember Big near Boys? United Artists, that that rented restaurant right down from there, down the street from. Oh, United Rocky Artists. Cola Cafe. Rocky Cola Cafe. What that was a fancy ass restaurant, wasn't it? No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> See, I don't know what fancy is. So now it's in Montrose, so everything is at least two dollars more expensive than it would be anywhere else. Mm, uh, it was really good though. Yeah, it's decent, but it's like good. it's like a it, so it's closed now, but it's the style. Oh, of, is it? Yeah, Aww, that sucks. style of a '50s diner, and like you even have little jukeboxes on the table, mm -hmm. and then the the, and the straw real thingy. And... Yeah, and like uh, all the classic stuff. Yeah, it was really cool. I thought it was. I always thought it was really fancy. I mean, they sell hamburgers and breakfast food. It's a diner. So <laughs> fancy ass burger joint. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now. <clears throat> We have been to a couple fast or not fa a couple really truly fancy restaurants with our family. This was incredibly rare. We went with Kenny and uh, my oh the oh the castle. What's that called? Castle. So our relatives, compared to us, are completely rich out of their ass. All right, that's how I would see it. They are middle class, <laughs> and middle class doesn't exist right now. Generally, well, they're still middle class. Like the middle class Considered, is shrunken, yes, yes, yes. but they're still middle class. If you were, if if we were to have a, as a society here in America to have a middle class, that's what they would be. Like they have a house. <laughs> in comparison to us, though, they might as well be billionaires. <laughs> But no, so we went to, we've been to a couple, like, truly actual real fancy restaurants where the food there, like, I remember I, I didn't want to order. Really? I didn't want to order food. Are you kidding? I, I saw was the prices, totally into it. And I was like, uh, what am I supposed to, or I would look, of course, specifically for the cheaper versions or the cheaper plates on oh, the. Oh, hell no. I knew they could afford it. I did not. I, like, I mean, I, you know, it's kind of like, like, when we, like, for example, like I said, like, if, if we went to IHOP, we would consider it um, fancy or Scissor. Remember, we used to go to Scissor. That well, was I a special we treat. <laughs> I knew we weren't paying, so I, yeah. I wasn't worried about it. No, so, price. for example, in comparison. Um, Although, I do believe I, I didn't choose, like, I mean, I didn't get, like, didn't a go for, like, the most anything, expensive yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. But I did get a Mai Tai, which, uh, drinking in front of family, that's fun <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> uh, but also... <laughs> Also, it was disgusting, and I'll oh, never get really? it again. It was so gross. I, like, I, I got it because it's like it's supposed to be a tropical drink that you drink mm -hmm. while you're on vacation. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I thought it was going to come in a coconut. Um, mm. So it did not. It came in like a, a whiskey glass, and it was gross. Mm, I don't like the taste of alcohol, but mm. like rum is okay, and um, uh, like uh, flavored whiskey is like I can choke that down. <laughs> Well, so, all right, so I did not know that Rocky Cola Cafe was not a fancy restaurant. My sister knows this. <laughs> like I mean, it felt fancy at the time, it was but it's really nice. It's not. It's good, because not, not only, yeah. not only, no, I think part of it is is not just um, the more you spend it. It was also like a very clean themed restaurant. Like, they, it was nice. I mean, it was very cute. It was kept up really nice. Mm -hmm. It was. You know, I mean, some of the booths were a sometimes better, depending on yeah. when you went, how busy they were. Yeah. You know, so that I can understand. Yeah, I remember sometimes we'd go in there and it'd be really busy, and the, you know, it'd still be a dirty table. Like, oh, that's always horrible. You know, <laughs> but whatever. Like, you know, it wasn't a big deal. We're used to that. We're used, <laughs> like we're used to having to brush off the previous crumbs from the table. <laughs> 
<laughs> wherever we go eat, you know? <laughs> I mean, honestly, when we were kids, McDonald's was, like, super exciting to be mm -hmm. going to, so. Um. Well, and also, McDonald's food was actually good back then. Well, what? better than now. Was it? <laughs> better than now. I remember because I used to love their food. I used to love eat like I love the taste. I and never, now I eat there and I'm just like, ew. I never loved their food. What I loved was that it was exciting to go <laughs> through the drive through or to like go in the I always wanted to go like what I thought was fancy was that they had the play area. Mm -hmm. And the like especially when Which we they were, don't have anymore. Yeah. But when we were <laughs> probably better now since covid that they don't have them but when I, um i mean normally you don't we see were, that anymore <laughs> we were in like upper elementary school when they finally came out with a really good one at the closest mcdonald's mm. and um and we were like pretty much too big but we just like were so into it that we went when it was like really <laughs> like not busy and we just went and played. <laughs> because we we had been in, the, like, it was like one of those ball things, right? Like all the uh -huh. balls and the little thing. And you yeah, know, and you could slides. swim through them and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Now, we had been in those a couple times before. We had been to Chuck E. Cheese a couple times here mm -hmm. and there. Um, we went as often as our mom could take us and stuff. Usually on our birthday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be a special celebration kind of a thing. So it wasn't normal for us. Um, <clears throat> and when they, when they, they added that one to the McDonald's, it was a regular McDonald's. And we were much older, yeah. you know, but we had always loved those things. So it was, I remember being so sad that I was too old to, to really yeah. take part in that because yeah. I, I always loved those so much. <laughs> I think we were, I was around 14 or so, like when they did that. And I was just like, dude, I'm too, I know I'm too big and too old for this now, but man, we never had enough time in those things, yeah. you know, like, and they were always so fun. Anyways, anyways, uh, we got into that a little bit. I don't remember exactly why. And that was fun. I don't mind. <laughs> um but yeah no i think it's funny to to especially because i didn't even know that <laughs> i didn't even i just found out right now that i hop and rocky cola cafe were not fancy <laughs> restaurants <laughs> i'm so ashamed and embarrassed oh my gosh no no okay <laughs> not really but i mean they're not funny. bad restaurants but they're like they're again middle class not rich but um but are they really middle class though yeah the way well, you we you, we just talked about the really super fancy restaurant that's middle class that we went to with Kenny and Myra. No, that was that's like super fancy. That's rich people stuff. That was like that that's was like up rich upper middle stuff. class. Oh, that okay. restaurant was upper middle. Like that was a treat. Cause, like cause, even for them, that was a treat. They don't eat there oh, every night. Okay, you know? that's not that their like, McDonald's. That was insane. Yeah, yeah. It was like on top of a hill. I forget what it's called. It was it was amazing. So pretty, and I'd heard about it so many times. And I'd, I'd never been there. And it was... I would never think of, of only rich people would go there. Yeah. There's a koi <laughs> pond and you cross a bridge to get yeah. like, over the koi Absolutely pond. Absolutely incredible. Like, the... holy crap. It's built like a castle. You wish you could go there every day just as a casual, oh, we're just going to go here and get some snacks. You know? Like, are you kidding me, man? Fuck, dude. Just go there every day for lunch whenever you feel like it. Like, give me a break, please. I bet you that, like, Disney execs do all the time. Too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the cheap stuff to them. Uh -huh. <laughs> to them. To us, it's like the most fancy thing That's their thing write -offs, yeah. that's the, To them, that's their McDonald's. <laughs> 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 All right, anyway, so, oh, okay. I Do you want to move into the next topic? Mm -hmm. We did talk about that a lot longer than we expected. It was fun. And we, it, we originally started with bacon and then getting into talking about <laughs> the fancy fast food. <laughs> <laughs> it's showing off our pork uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. I see. I was just telling Crystal about like earlier. Now, right now I have a little bit more in my account. Thanks to Crystal, but uh, mostly thanks to unemployment. But um, we're used to literally barely paying our bills. And this is not a new thing. This isn't just because of COVID. And fortunately, I have been working at home for a long time. So COVID didn't have that much of an effect on it. It did have an effect, but not as drastically as it has on other people. So we were very lucky with that. Well, that and without COVID, I wouldn't be on unemployment because yeah. I quit my job mm -hmm. and I didn't get on unemployment until like six months later when COVID was really serious. Yeah. Yeah. So without COVID, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, we would, I, I don't know, be homeless. Probably. So, <laughs> so poverty but, so, is fun. So, uh, uh, we were, this is something that we've experienced pretty all our life. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, so as, as scary, like I'm especially being now in control in comparison to when we were kids and, and we had our mom in control of everything. So she was the one that if she did stress, that was on her. <laughs> and now having taken over that stress is the, oh, I can't stand it. You know, I know I'm not one to like miss my childhood cause it was a horrific unending nightmare, <laughs> but, uh, that is one thing I don't miss is not paying bills. Yeah. Yeah, and and I mean so that is one thing I do miss do. is not paying bills. Yeah. Oh I yeah, miss yeah. Not bills. I'm like I really wish I could pass it off to my sister. I am so sick and tired of you know, having it. I am sick of it. Okay. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> um, I can't remember why I was bringing that up, but uh, it was just something we briefly spoke about before we came back to decide and do another podcast. But so the story we have next should be interesting. Well, we didn't mean to get into too much of the food and the restaurants and. <laughs> Whatever that just kind of happened because bacon. My sister wanted to talk about bacon, dude. It's so it good. is good though. It is. It's actually really impressive for a twenty-second microwave bacon. Like it really is impressive. <laughs> what is the? Remember the name of the brand? It's uh, Attlewood Farms. Oh, Applewood. Applewood Farms. Farms. Applewood Farms boxed bacon, like fully cooked. Yeah. From Addy. Aldi. Aldi. Okay. All right. So anyway, so the main story we wanted is to to continue into hashtag not sponsored. Was <laughs> Yeah, true. No, th- like, you know, we're normal freaking people here, man. We're just talking about crap we get. We're we're not sponsored. We do also, by the way, have Skittles. <laughs> it's the rainbow, man. That's my favorite candy, though. We have some Skittles. Not to brag. <laughs> yeah, and I'm drinking some Voodoo Ranger IPA. And I am drinking tap water. So those are our sponsors. <laughs> Brought to you by tap water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> God, go ahead and talk. Like, tell them what you wanted to talk all right. about. Our main so, story. <laughs> the story starts when our little brother dies, so it's already a happy beginning. Uh, <laughs> so what happened is uh, I was seven, Jeremy was eight, Bubba was five. Real quick, this mm-hmm. specific story again, just to cap it real quick, we want to talk about how we ended up in foster care in, in foster the first care, place. Yeah. Okay, continue. Sorry. Yeah. So for whatever reason, <clears throat> my mom took that uh, hard uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Kind of freaked out a little bit, you know, <laughs> overreaction, whatever. Yeah, because uh, she saw it. This the, our, our mom yeah. watched our brother die literally in front of her eyes. Yeah, he got hit by... Uh, so what had happened that day was she had had this weird, like, uh, rash on the bottom of her feet and she couldn't walk. And so she asked the school to send Bubba home from kindergarten. He had walked home with her, like, every day. She'd go pick him up every day. And so he knew the way, and it was only, like, two blocks. Literally. Yeah. And so he came down to across from where we lived. And then Mom said uh, she called out, uh, like, look both ways. So he did. And then he stepped out into the street. Oh, he waited for a garbage truck to pass, and then he stepped out Mm -hmm. into the street. There was a van right behind the garbage truck that Bubba didn't see. The guy in the van obviously didn't see Bubba. Uh, they smashed into each other, and the van won because it's metal, and he was like flesh. And Five bone. year old child. Yes, uh, he was dead on arrival. The it was the kid in the van did a hit and run. He was twenty years old. He turned himself in two hours later. Um, and uh, mom never wanted to press charges, but I believe that the police station did. So he may have gone to jail for that, which to me is really sad because he was like. That's you're 20 when you go in, you're like basically a child, and then you're 27 when you get out, and you're supposed to be a grown up. The fact that he turned himself in too shows that he. This wasn't a purposeful thing. It was an accident. It was an accident, you know? but I think he had also been identified. So I don't know how much of it was like altruism as mm. much as. Uh, he understood that he was already in trouble. Oh, okay, I got you. But I don't, I don't honestly know. Yeah. But there was no, there was no indication that he was speeding or on drugs or high. We're or not thinking he's like a murderer trying no, to run was, people over. It was like what, like <laughs> one in the afternoon or something, like two or three, whatever, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, so he got, um, so he got hit and he got, he got taken up to heaven, according to my mother who witnessed <laughs> the thing. Um, Jesus picked him up well the Jesus way she described came it came down yeah. from heaven he he picked up bubba's body he laid down his uh body and then took his soul up and they hovered above the scene watching. our mom was How- like that she what do you call that like i think it was visionary but she she saw these things spiritually so this was something that she had like been struggling with because it happened mm-hmm. so fast yeah. and she didn't see any kind of details or anything and she was just like god just please 
please just show me what happened. Like, I'm just, I just need to know what happened. So I think in a dream or a vision, mm, he saw, okay. she saw what happened. Mm. He like slowed it down and got to walk her through it. Now, just real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, geez. Oh, I was turning away from the microphone, so mm -hmm. it gets a little less. Um, but I mean, I'm also an extremely spiritual person. Uh, I, I used to call myself a Christian until I recognized, you know, it took a while, but I, I, years ago, I recognized that I don't need to call myself a Christian to know God. This is just, this is just how it is. Like, I don't care. Like, you know, whatever. And I can understand some arguments, like, you know, false gods and all that kind of stuff and whatever. I don't, I, I don't care. I'm not bothered by that. Um, but anyways, our mom was, was, I'm not even on the level our mom was. Well, our mom at the time had, was an atheist. Really? Yeah. She had, um, I don't remember that at all. She'd grown up in the church oh. and then she, at some point started rebelling. She was just like, this is all bullshit. This <laughs> and then, which makes sense because a lot of it is. Yeah. Yeah. Especially organized religion can be mm -hmm. really stupid. So, so when Bubba, by the time Bubba had died, she was not a, a believer, but oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Cause, once... she, Cause we used to talk about stuff sometimes and she all to me always came off as a believer. Well, after he died, she became a believer again huh. because she had, she had to replace something, you know, she had lost something very precious. So she, in her mind, it wasn't like, I'm going to choose to replace Bubba with Jesus, but she just <laughs> needed, she needed, I don't know. She just needed, she got what she needed. Yeah. Kind of. She got, she had. Yeah. She just, she needed to feel like there was some, you know, I don't know. Whatever, I really believe what was. she saw. I really believe that. Well, so she, I don't know if she'd ever like genuinely stopped believing. I just know that she was very angry and mm -hmm. she'd had a horrible life. Well, it reminds me of you <laughs> up when, until then. So when mom died and you were immediately like, screw God. Yeah. Fuck straight up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And lots of anger. Lots yeah. of anger. And, and it reminded me of. Uh, and this is the, the the weird thing about it to me because like I get it, but it reminded me of like how people will be like, "How could God exist when the world sucks so bad?" And I'm just like, "Why are you blaming God? Well, look at the people that you could blame. These are the <laughs> like these are us doing these things, and you're blaming God. Like, what are you talking? What is this nonsense? Yeah, you're just like, oh, if God existed, these things wouldn't. I wish it were that simple. Yeah, I do. And I would, you know. Anyways, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Anything. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, so she had that vision of uh, Jesus coming down to pick up Bubba, and so she started believing again. Um, but she was also at the time. Uh, so okay, so she spent like two weeks after Bubba died not sleeping, mm -hmm. and she didn't tell me when she was telling me the story that the reason she wasn't sleeping uh, is because uh, she was hopped up on meth for two weeks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> These, I don't even know this shit. <laughs> yeah. This is what drives me fucking crazy, okay? <laughs> now, uh, my mom and my sister were very close. Well, closer than me and my mom. <clears throat> and that doesn't mean I didn't feel close. Like, I knew always that my mom loved me. Always. I knew that. This was something that I could not deny, you know. Um, but, <clears throat> I like, I'm an asshole. I, when it, just, just generally, and putting it into sim simple terms, very selfish, very self-involved. Uh, you know, I was in my own world all the time and I was playing video games constantly if I was at home. Other times, if I wasn't at home, I was out. I was gone. I was playing sports. I was riding bikes, skateboarding, uh, never home. Right. So my sister had more time with my mom and they and they spent they were more intimate than me and my mom. Well, and me and my mom, I feel close. I feel very close. I'll mom. explain why. OK, <laughs> I'll explain why that happened. <laughs> So what happened was I had face blindness from my whole life. Oh yeah. And I didn't know this what was something I recently found out like a year or two yeah. ago. I didn't even know that either. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know mm. I had it. All I knew was that other people just seemed to get to know each other a lot quicker and be Easier. more comfortable with each other than mm. quickly than I did. My, is that that maybe is that part of your agoraphobia maybe? Part of it probably. Yeah. And then also like so I read on Wikipedia that people with uh with uh, face blindness also have uh, issues like connecting to people. And I think partly is just because when you see somebody and you don't recognize them, you don't have that. It's a stranger. For me, like I can have a really intimate experience with a stranger, like in a doctor's office or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if I ever see them again, you I'm not going to connect that experience. Yeah. I have that experience inside me, yeah. but I'm not going to connect it emotionally with the person I'm looking at because I don't realize that's the same person. I get that. Um, that's, that's pretty crappy. <laughs> yeah. My, my face blindness was always, uh, kind of like, <laughs> dude, my sister told me she didn't even recognize me every time she sees me. And I was like, what? What? I didn't tell you that. Mm. 
Pretty much. It takes me an extra second if I'm not <laughs> expecting to see you. Yeah. 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 But and I mean, yeah. I recognize you. Like, if I'm looking at a picture of you, I know that's okay. you. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the first time I heard of this, this was, this was like a year yeah. or two ago, and some I was just people, like, what? Some people have it so bad that, like, they don't recognize their own family members. Yeah. Mine was always, like, mild to moderate. I knew who my family was because I saw you every day. Yeah. But also, like, I honestly, like, I felt so bad after Bubba died because I was trying to picture his face. Oh, yeah, no, I've had similar experiences and thoughts. And I was like, I went to mom and I was like, mom, I'm already forgetting Bubba. And yeah, she's like, yeah. she just like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember if I've had that, like, I'm, I feel this, this deep love and connection, but I don't know him. Yeah. At all. Yeah. So, um, but why were we talking, we we're talking about, oh, oh, the difference between your connection to mom and, and mine. Yeah. So. Uh, what, okay, so um, we spent about a year and a half in foster care. Within that time, we had seen mom a couple of times, but it had always been... Visits, short visits. Yeah, and I remember walking past her in the courthouse, and <laughs> Dina brought me back. And I, Jeez. at first, like, as I, in that, like, as a kid, I, I, I thought... Well, and in a courthouse, a place you're not familiar with and whatever. Yeah, and I... At the time, I was like, I just walked by her and I thought I didn't see her. But what had yeah. happened was I saw her. I just didn't realize that was my mom. Mm -hmm. So Dina brought me back to my mom and she's like, your mom's over here. And so when I looked at her and she, being told that was my mom, I was like, oh, that's my mom. And then when she spoke, because when you have face blindness, you kind of compensate with other like senses. Mm -hmm. So like the way people like move or their voices or whatever, you recognize them more from that. So, uh, so, so, you know, obviously as soon as she started talking or whatever, then I knew who she was. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, um, like other than that, she'd visit us at Illy's. So I'd always hear her talking to Illy before I'd come in, you know, but when she came to visit us at Mrs. Lewis's, um, she just she came in and I didn't recognize Mrs. Her. Lewis was one of our foster kids. She was our only our, good our best mother. one, our favorite one. <laughs> She's our only good foster mother. Um, she was uh, our last one too. So she was. We finished out the school year with her, and then we went back with our mom. I remember you telling me that story when <clears throat> we talked about this probably a few years ago. I don't know, but it was a while back. But so when my sister was telling me about this story when our mom came to visit us at Mrs. Lewis's. I didn't know this back then. Yeah. My sister didn't even know who she was. Well, I thought she was a kidnapper because she walked through the door and she had changed so much. So, okay, she had gained weight. Her posture mm. was different. Oh, yeah, yeah. Her skin was gray. Her hair wasn't blonde <laughs> anymore. Like, there was nothing Wasn't like... it? What color was it? Was it just darker? Well, her natural hair color is brownish. Like Really? Yeah. yeah. She was... Well, I mean, I always remember her having, like, kind of dirty blonde hair. There was a point where she had so when her hair was blonde, right? Yeah, when her hair was, like, growing out, it'd be, like, dirty, like, dirty blonde to, to platinum blonde. She always wanted platinum blonde hair, so she'd always die at that. So that's all how I always remembered her. Okay. Um, like, because it's not like you don't have any visual memory at all. It's like a blurry photograph. Mm -hmm. So she had blonde hair. She was around this size, you know, whatever. Um, and yeah. I'd never really, like, paid close attention to what she looked like because it didn't matter. I yeah. saw her every yeah. day, you know, yeah. whatever. Which and, is kind of weird. Well, I, I think part of that, too, is the face blindness thing because um, I remember... Now, I don't remember... It's hard for me to, to remember exactly back then. I do remember when she came to visit us. And I do, re like, I, it's hard, like, I, it's not fresh for me. Um, <clears throat> but I do remember, as far as I can remember, is that I recognized her right away. Oh, yeah. And then Crystal was like, when she told me this, she said she did not recognize our mom. And well, I, I, keep... I kind of, I was like, wait, was that not our mom? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I recognized her, you know. Well, it's funny um, because, like, <clears throat> I got there first. I had been waiting for her all day. Mm -hmm. And anytime time I thought I heard a card run in the living room, finally Mrs. Lewis was like, I told you, I will, ca I will call you when she gets, as soon as she gets here, I will call you. Um, and she, like, she said it so firmly that I was like, I better like, just be like cool from now on. Cause she was not usually very mean. And I just, anything that, bugging it, her, right? that sounded approaching anger, yeah. I was very wary of at mm. that point. So, um, so I was like, I better not run out again. But, uh, but when she came in, uh, Mrs. Lewis opened the door and then Mrs. Lewis who had been seeing me w run to the door all day is watching me look at this woman and like and not know who she is well it's not even that i didn't know who she was i knew who she was because i knew who she wasn't she was this bitch pretending to be my mother 
<laughs> for whatever reason. Wow. Um, yeah, I forgot you told me that too. That's and I'm crazy. thinking like, I'm looking at her. I'm just like, how stupid. Does she <laughs> does she think her own child wouldn't know that that's not her? <laughs> didn't I like run to her though and like hug her and shit? No, no? you okay, didn't. Okay. So I'm so I'm there, I'm still there and I'm just like, I'm just horrified. I'm just like, I'm so I'm just looking be- between Mrs. Lewis and, and mom and Mrs. Lewis be looking between me and mom and mom's just looking at me like, aren't you gonna give me a hug? And she calls me Chrissy, which I just like yeah. nobody is call- allowed to call me that except for mom. <laughs> What a trip, man. So you finally come out. <laughs> you finally come out and you like glance up at her. And you're just like, hi. <laughs> I must have been upset of something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I mean, at that point, I think you were a little bit resentful of like, really? I think maybe my guess, and I can't say I what can't your feelings why. were. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember that, though. I do remember that now that you mention it. I remember like, think, like, just upset. looking back at that, thinking like, I don't remember why I was upset, though. I would imagine that, like, after a year and a half of having seen her on and off mm. and and having been through so much, maybe you just didn't trust that we were actually going to go home with her or that mm. she actually cared. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. even when we when we told the judge, like, who we wanted to live with, you wouldn't answer. Really? Yeah. I do not remember that at all. Yeah. Wow. And we had a custody thing, um, and the judge was like, if you could go back to live with your mom, would you want to? And Or, or actually, he asked... Uh, would you live with your mom or your dad? And I said my mom. And then he, Jeremy... Was, I would never pick my dad. He's, yeah, but he said, <clears throat> what about you? And he was like, I don't care. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then he said, well, if you could go back to live with your mom, would you? And Because he was trying to get an answer yeah. out of you. And you were like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like me right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused by that. Wow, but yeah, that's so horrible. When you, when you came... When she Poor came to mom visit, too, they have to go with that too. That sucks. Yeah, so I'm like standing there, staring at her, like just furious. And I was, I didn't know what to do. I was seven. I was like, Mrs. Lewis might not believe me, but also like she's closer to Mrs. Lewis. She might hurt her if I tell Mrs. Lewis, and Mrs. Lewis believes me and tries to get her to leave. So I'm like, so I'm waiting for you because you're my big brother. <laughs> And you walk in, and I'm just like, <clears throat> I'm just like, okay, he's gonna tell her off because she's not our mom. She's <laughs> some weird kidnapper. <laughs> So she, I remember recognizing her. Yeah. You looked at her for like half a second. You're like, hey, and like look down at the ground. And then I'm looking at you trying to make eye contact. Like, just look at her closer. Just look. You can tell that's not her. You just oh have to look gosh, at her. Man. And then you look at me and I'm just staring at you, like trying to will you to understand. Mm-hmm. And then and then you just like glare at me. <laughs> you don't understand why I'm staring at you. I think I was waiting for you to make a move. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So <laughs> and then I'm just like, how did you not know? So and then Mrs. Lewis is like, maybe you guys can go outside and sit on the lawn and talk. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm just like, okay. So I was, <laughs> I went first because I wanted, I wanted to see if there was a van outside, a white van. Kidnappers mm-hmm. always have white mm-hmm. vans. Um, and I wanted to see if there was a white van outside so that I could w- wait for mom to be outside or this kidnapper bitch to be outside <laughs> um and uh, i'd like slam the door closed and then get to the phone and call 911 mm. um <laughs> the planning of my sister was seven years old <laughs> i was eight at that point <laughs> okay <laughs> um, know, man. <laughs> so uh so i so but i go outside there's no white van i don't need to shove you back inside and call Mrs. Lewis, but I am keeping an eye out for a white van. You're like wandering around the perimeter <laughs> of the yard, just like kicking bushes and just like not making eye contact. I remember that. And mom's like, Chrissy, come sit down. Come sit down. And I was just like, oh, this bitch is trying to call me Chrissy. <laughs> Finally, like her tone of voice, when you're talking to somebody that you're trying to be on your side, you're going to talk in a nice, nor- mm-hmm. nicer tone of voice mm-hmm. than you usually do. But finally she goes, Crystal, sit down. <laughs> and then I recognized her. Her being me. <laughs> <laughs> she took charge, basically. And I was yeah, like, right. I was like, I looked at her and I was like, how did this stranger just sound exactly like my mother? <laughs> And I what a looked, horrible I, experience. I looked man. at her and I and I was just like looking for like I was just like mom had a mole. This bitch has a mole. <laughs> I think I vaguely understood that you could change your hair color at that <laughs> point. 
and uh, and people can get bigger, like people who can get bigger, yeah, smaller. Change. So I'm just like trying to like, and so I I sit down. I'm still not sure this woman is our mother. Uh, I am 98 percent sure she's not. But there's I don't see a white van. Like every time a car passes, I turn around to make sure it's not a white van. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mrs. Lewis fortunately was kind of like on like she had like a lot of property. Um, yeah, so it was nice. like her house was next to it, like a huge vacant lot. It was across the street from a huge vacant lot. So it's, I'm, I always think of it as a farm, even though it wasn't like a farm farm. Well, because there was chicken and a horse there, and, and there was a big lot scary of, dog. Like the land. Yeah. And a lot of the land. A lot of land. Yeah. Um, and then there's two houses. To me, like Mr. Lewis's bungalow was like a second house because mm-hmm. I didn't know the difference. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, so I sit down and she starts talking about how we're going to like go live with her. And I'm just like... Because I'm, I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, I'm just going to humor this bitch until my real mom shows up. <laughs> um, And then, uh, and then like, so I'm not convinced that that's mom mm. at all, even by the time she leaves. But I'm mm. less, like, reticent. And I remember talking to mom about that later. I was like, what, did, did you wonder why I was acting so weird? And she's like, I just thought you were angry. Right, yeah, that's, because that is a natural yeah. kind of, a, it's kind of like me, like, I, I, I still have no idea why I was upset. I can remember um, that, but I can't remember why, you know? I mean, first of all, you'd never been particularly treated well <laughs> by her, let alone by any of the other people who were supposedly well, supposed to take care of us. No, you say that, but then, we talked about that before. I don't remember being mistreated by her. I remember, uh, oh God, I remember a few. So I don't remember a ton about her childhood, but I just remember you always being in trouble. That was my... I was a little bastard. Are you kidding me? I was. I was a troublemaker. I was I was a little bastard, for sure. I don't agree with that assessment. <laughs> also, here's the thing. I remember. I know what I was. When children like. are acting out, there's usually a reason for it. Uh, like, children aren't no. born bastards. Well, no, but no, but you... I mean, that's I mean, a whole nother... Technically, you could be a bastard, subject, but... Yeah. but I mean, no, I mean, we do things that we're... Kids are kids. Yeah, you weren't a bad kid. You were just a kid. Oh, I was a little... I'm telling you, I was a little bastard. I remember <laughs> how often I was frustrated with you. But I also remember being frustrated. Like, why can't he just, like, do what he's supposed to do like I do? <laughs> because if you do what you're supposed to do, you don't get in trouble. <laughs> right? Mom yeah. doesn't pull off her shoe and fucking like beat you with it. Yeah. <laughs> or, or break spoons on your I ass. I was not into doing... Just doing what I'm told. <laughs> Never yeah. have been. Never well, have. Because here's the thing. Mom was out of control most of our childhoods. She had bad taste in friends. She had very little family support. The family that she did have. It was like I said, I can understand the, now why she stepped She was the black sheep. Them. She was also the only non-Christian at that point. Um, I think probably still is. I think they're all still Christians. Even Robert, who's a thief and a child molester. We're talking about, like, now, and again, I, I care for our relatives, but they are, I mean, like, if I were to simplify things, they, to me, they seem like psychos. Just <laughs> when it, when we're not on a personal, like, when we're hanging out, if we're Political together, psychos, personal yes, friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> political psychos, personal friends. Like, yeah. No, that actually, and that, that, that does, that is a, that matters. Yeah. That truly does matter because it did. Anyways, so um, I don't know if you had much more uh, specifically on that. Yes. Okay. I'm not even near done. Okay. To me, these, <laughs> to me, these stories are very like closely because de- they they define my childhood. Mm. So I remember them and they mean a lot to me. So and this was I just, actually I can tell, I just don't rem- I don't remember mom ever being abusive specifically like our dad because our dad was i we left him when i was four and my memory sucks ass and i will never forget that he was literally just a random abuser mm. well he was cruel right mom wasn't cruel she was i would angry. get punished by her for yeah. doing something bad you know okay and so when we talked about this previously i'm not sure if it's on the deleted one or, or one of the ones that went up but when you do something wrong, you're supposed to be punished, but it's supposed to be in... Oh, equal to the... Equal to what the crime was. <laughs> yeah, I think that was during the... And I the think also to your understanding of record. what the crime is due to your yeah. age and your yeah. ignorance and all that kind of stuff. It's not like for, like, in comparison to someone getting arrested for possession of weed and then going to prison for 20 years. It just makes no sense. Yeah. That, like, the punishment so, doesn't match the crime or exactly. whatever kind of thing. And so I think in mom's case, it was more a matter of, like, 
neglect due to like drug addiction slash her own mental illnesses um because she had depression so sometimes she'd be disassociated um and uh so even though she loved us and she did the best she could as a mother it still sends signals to the child's brain that you're not being taken care of properly and you don't understand that no, see, and so you just no, end you, up chaotic. you analyze stuff like that but i never felt that way i know you didn't feel that way you thought that if something bad happened to you it was your fault that's because i still see it that way <laughs> <laughs> i know you do and that's really upsetting well i mean like you know if i break it again there's a difference between doing something wrong and the punishment not fitting that yeah that whatever yeah and I think that she over punished you sometimes and she under punished yeah, you sometimes. Yeah. And those same mix. That doesn't mean I didn't do something wrong though. Right. But it doesn't mean that it's not, it doesn't mean that it doesn't fuck you up. If, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, I don't know. Again, her I... intent, I'm not saying her intention was to fuck yeah. you up. Like, I think I don't, I don't remember dad at all, except I did. I'd had up, have one memory of him. It is a bad memory. Mm. I can and still so, picture that house. I can literally picture the house we lived in, the yeah. two-story house. I I mean, I know I must have loved him because when I found out that we were moving, I invited him to come with us, and Mom had to change the date of our leaving. Uh, <laughs> I, did not that's, I did not know that. I don't think I did. I didn't know that, that until... So I didn't know that until I was, like, an adult. Mom finally told me that. I thought that was <laughs> that's uh, hilarious. weird and hilarious. Um, <laughs> so, you know, because you don't have an understanding as a child. You, you love so unconditionally you love who's around you i didn't you. love our dad never well he, i think you have learned to not no i'm well i mean i don't know i i, I do not have any good memories at all yeah. i do not have any love for him i don't have all. any good memories of him either but i must have loved him at some point and i I'm, never felt any love for him i yeah and maybe the other reason you you have kind of a higher opinion of mom is just because you're comparing the two and he was so no. he was so horrific that her her injustices just don't seem like anything no past that. i just i i i just recognize that our mom loved us that's all she did love us but there was also abuse and neglect <clears throat> um so now but okay so to get back to the Why? reason we ended up in foster care. Okay, okay, but let me finish this story okay. first. So we get we so we finish with Mrs. Lewis. We get back to living the, with this bitch that I don't believe is our mother. <laughs> and she was amazing, man. She, she was did so much for so us. Yeah, hard. She yeah. had she had decorated our rooms beautifully. Um, like everything in our room was wrapped, like hairbrushes, clothes, everything it was a present. Everything, was everything a present. was a present. Yeah. And she had like. She had tried to match what she thought our styles would be. I had like girly strawberry shortcake stuff and like whatever she could get at pick and save that was like name brand <laughs> and then anything that wasn't, we should just get get as close as possible. Mm -hmm. And then your room is all nautical and cool and like <laughs> brown and gray, uh, brown and like navy blue. Mm -hmm. Um, and like and just again, everything all wrapped up and just yeah. like cool it was like every day was almost christmas yeah and for oh, a yeah. long time we'd come home every day and there'd be a present waiting for us yeah. on like on every my day. my sofa bed on your bed yeah and um she stopped doing that when i came home well i'd been kind of an asshole <laughs> well i was an asshole because i didn't think she was my mom that's it's so fucked up man oh my gosh dude <laughs> so I wasn't treating her well. And yeah. so like this stuff she'd give me, I'd just be like, whatever, what's next? It might have worn off on me. I don't know. Well, but I remember that it was amazing. Though. But I came home one day and I was like, where's my present? And she's <laughs> like, you don't get one because you don't appreciate them. Oh, wow. And I just remember being so crushed. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> You know you deserve it, but also, like, you don't want it, you know? That's the whole, um, appreciate what you have or whatever thing, right? Like, yeah. and then when it's gone, you're like, oh, wait, what? But, but there'd also be other times, because I'm not saying she was a terrible mother. Or she, like, was, like, all the time or whatever. But she was a fucked up person, and so yeah. that reflected in her parenting. But there'd be also other times where I'd just be like, I just, just, like... I was like, I just, I don't feel good. I feel bad. I feel bad right now. And like, like nothing physical, but I was just like, I just feel bad. Just, mom, mom would be like, do you need a treat? <laughs> and I'd be like, what? <laughs> the first time she, I was like, what? And she's like, do you need a treat? And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, do you want a special surprise? And I was like, mm. yeah. And Cause she'd like buy stuff for us to save up for our birthdays. Cause she couldn't like 
treating yeah. us every day. And mm -hmm. then obviously when she was treating us every day, then we weren't appreciating it or I wasn't. So, um, so she just like have these little presents. It'd be like, like a candle or whatever. She'd be like, she'd be I like, feel, you can choose I feel from this so or this. horrible even now the way I treated her and just remembering all this stuff. So here's the thing. I feel bad for every time that I mistreated her. But I also understand that the reason that I did was because I was hurt and I was lashing out. You know, and, and had we had a more stable childhood, either from her parentage or from any of the other ones, um, then we wouldn't have been so angry and we wouldn't have been such dicks, I think. Well, you know, I, I'm, it's, it's such a weird thing because she didn't have it easy either, you know. No, it's... she didn't. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? She... That's that's why I always write. Yeah. She did the very, very best. Like, I believe, I, mean, I believe that 100%. <laughs> I'm not saying that she was a, that she was, she could be abusive or she could no, be I neglectful don't. because I hate her or I, like whatever. I'm not mad at her. But I also have to recognize that there was damage done that I need to repair now. And part of it was just the fact that she was such a fucked up person that she fucked me up. See, we, we I think we just have different perspectives on that. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's something we can't agree on. Yeah. Well, and because you take responsibility for your mistreatment, you know. <laughs> Yeah, what a trip, man. All right, so... Anyway, so the point of that was uh, we get back to live with her. It takes me a few... So I'd kind of go in and out of believing she was our mom because... Mm -hmm. Oh, and but this is why. <laughs> okay, so I was like... So we go to live with her. I'm walking home from school, and I'm just like, I'm going to prove that this bitch isn't our mom. <laughs> so I'm going to go, and I'm going to ask her a bunch of things that mom would know, but this bitch <laughs> wouldn't know. So I got into the habit after school every day of going to talk to her and question her about our childhood. The problem was I remembered so little about her childhoods that I couldn't prove her wrong. If she was making it up, there was no way for me to know. But I got into the habit of talking to her and I kind of liked her. She, you know, she was, you know, I kind of liked her. I liked talking to her and she was interesting. And also if she was my mom, she was really cool. And if she wasn't my mom, she was like, cool. But also like, why is she doing this? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hmm. so I, yeah, so I was confused, but I was also kind of waiting for my real mom to show up at what some point. Trip. Like I knew she would find us cause I knew our mom loved us. So I knew she would find us eventually and she'd beat the crap out of this bitch, <laughs> you know? But also, like, there were things that would happen. Like, she would interact. Like, I remembered Renz, and Renz acted like that was mom. Um, and he was living with us. So. God, you, you're such a weirdo. And then, like, family would come over eventually. Like, and, right. And they'd be interacting with her like oh she was her. Gosh. And so it would convince me. But then, like, once in a while, like, every six months or so, I'd wake up from a nap and just, like, panic. Like, Oh my god, I've been treating like this woman like she's my mother. Like I fell for it. And I'm like, how could he trick me? It was such a mind fuck. <laughs> of like uh like what's that called when you get kidnapped and then you you like your Oh, the your syndrome thing or whatever. Yeah. Right? That uh That's Stockholm right. syndrome. There, yeah. So it was just like this bitch has got me with the Stockholm syndrome, which I didn't know the name for at the time. Um, but I was just like, how did how did she win me over? How was I so stupid? And then I'd get angry, and then I would lash out, yeah. and then I because I'd get cold, I'd get That's really so cold, and up. like yeah. So um, so that was like that it's, went on. For it's you. so weird because you had this this anger towards her for that like this belief that she's not our mom. At the time, I had no anger at her for being a bad mom, and or, I, I yeah. would just get angry at her for trying to control me. <laughs> She, well, because here's the thing. She didn't know when to fucking let up. Like, because here's the thing. Like, you you were stubborn and she was stubborn. She was more stubborn because she had more practice. But you were pretty fucking stubborn. Like, I remember one time there was this, like, weird bean disgusting soup that she tried to make us eat. Mm -hmm. And I choked mine down and I did not like it. Oh, no. I can't remember what I did, but I would not eat it. You would not eat it. <laughs> it was so gross. You would not eat it. And so you didn't eat for a day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, you were like, can you sneak me some bread? Just sneak me a piece of bread. And so I <laughs> snuck you a piece of bread and mom caught us. I remember that. I forgot about that. And she screamed at me and I was mad at you. <laughs> Because I'd been helping you, trip. and then I yeah, got in wow, trouble. That is pretty terrible. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a really bad memory. 
And then... <laughs> Because it was, really was like that, right? So she comes home with McDonald's, like, mm. on day three. Mm. And you're so fucking hungry. And, shit, yeah. and she's like, great, you can have McDonald's as soon as you finish this soup. <laughs> Did I eat it? I don't remember if I ate it. You, I think you had, like, three bites and she finally, like, gave up. Wow. And she was like, all right. You can it, was so it was so gross. It was so gross. I didn't like it either. <laughs> she never made it again. Man, that oh, our poor mom, man. What? Okay, why are you <laughs> Story. <laughs> no, that is fucked up. But I mean, you know, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. It's just weird. It's it's just it's just a matter of like her being so fucked up. She didn't understand when where to stop well, with yeah. the discipline. But I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. No, you don't that starve your with. child for three days. I don't. Did she really though? Yeah. Did it not get any small like thing? Man, that's fucking she didn't crazy. Really have I don't remember it. I, I do the... remember kind of basically being starved for three days. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Because like, I, I also remember that bread part. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to get in trouble. Because here's the thing. Like, <laughs> I was... Okay. Wow, man. <laughs> the thing that happens when you're overpunished is you get afraid of any any punishment. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything wrong. But I, I I just could never... That never worked on me. That never worked do on you. Do you remember when we... You were like... You were like, <laughs> if... Okay, so your trade-off was... I get to do whatever I want, and they get to do whatever they want to me. <laughs> right. And mine was, yeah. And mine okay, was, let's go, dude. <laughs> if I don't do anything wrong, nothing wrong will be done to me. I and remember here's, um, what. Here's why that's fucked up: because you grow up, and as adult, you realize there aren't enough rules for you to follow to keep you safe. And also, mm, yeah, the bullshit they were pulling on you was arbitrary nonsense due <laughs> to their own fucking mental illnesses, had nothing to do with you. You weren't doing anything wrong most of the time. <laughs> and even when you did do something wrong, they were over-fucking reacting. Yeah. yeah. Not so for, and not, I, for not liking me. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> freaking hell, man. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is like, because I wasn't just over-punished by her, over-punished or under-punished, because she... she she did not know how to like mm. fucking regulate herself mm. but like with... i mean i can i mean i'm i don't know i'm not a parent fortunately for any kids right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know me too like i i overreact is when i'm angry you know I'm, we I all don't, do we yeah, all do and i think that trip. all kids deal with parents who are uneven in, in their emotions also right? figuring out things. because they're human yeah. they have human parents and parents mm -hmm. parents aren't perfect and they fuck up and whatever i think that the difference is that mom was so ill-equipped to to be a stable influence plus she was on drugs and drinking all the time like that doesn't help <laughs> you know so um so I mean, I, she, I genuinely believe she did the best she could. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that. Mm -hmm. And I love her, and I miss her, and I would trade. I probably still you know. somewhere have notes that she used to leave us. Yeah. You know, like in it. We do. I have a, I have a stack of stuff. From Man. Her. I mean, she tried her very she, best. She really know? did. Yeah. yeah. She she really she really loved us as hard as she could when mm -hmm. she was capable of it. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate that. But I also... I. For my own sanity, I have to understand where she where she fucked up, so that I understand mm. why I'm fucked. I up. don't. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's that difference too. There, it's kind of like, um, to me, in, in a way, it's 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 like people like knowing their ancestry and their history and stuff, and I could not care less. Oh. You know. Well, like, no. So, so there's I was... a different thing. You know, I just don't. I'm just like whatever. I don't, I don't need to analyze it. Like. <laughs> well, the the other difference is you've always been a, an independent person. Mm -hmm. You've always been independent from her. You've always seen yourself as a separate person. When she died, I had such a small clue of who I was that I was completely lost because I didn't know who I was without her. She was like, I was like the arm <laughs> and she was the rest of the body. Wow. Yeah. That was how little of a sense of identity that I had. And so that's maybe that's why I'm so analytical about where, where she fucked mm. up. But also, like, I want to look at her honestly. Mm. Because it doesn't... Love, unconditional love doesn't mean Are anything. Are you saying I look at her as a liar? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think that you... I think it's a different perspective. Yeah. but I But I don't think that I can call it unconditional love if my condition is that she was a great person who did did her best and and just ignore anything bad that she did well, again, i can you i have to be able to recognize that she was a human being that's why it's a she's fallible yeah. and i love her so much more than you know anybody else on the I, it's like i said I, I i know that we had 
plenty of issues. That, especially that story we just had about the beans one. Like, <laughs> I forgot about that. It's not, it's what a weird, messed up story. Yeah. That is that is terrifying. That is that is that's torture. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, man, God, thankfully that's I think that was literally the worst thing we ever experienced. I ever experienced with her. You know, as far as punishments go, I think that was the worst out of everything. <laughs> think of some other things but that was probably the worst um but but to explain why i felt the need to be close to her was partly because i was trying to make sure that you know i was trying to <laughs> oh the other reason was like okay um i'm gonna let i'm gonna pretend like i'm i'm going along with this bitch <laughs> until my mom shows up <laughs> And to do that, I have to be friendly, mm -hmm. you know? And then also, like, mm -hmm. just, like, who is this person, you know? Who who would pretend that this is this person's mother? And it was just so confusing that you didn't realize that that was mom. <laughs> but also, you wouldn't look at her. <laughs> um. So, anyway. But, <laughs> but that's just to explain, like, it wasn't a, de a deficiency on your part of, of why you didn't get to know her better. Like, I think you got to know her as much as... as your personality dictated and i got to know her as much as my personality dictated well we had different we just had different relationships yeah yeah but i don't think like it's because you're a selfish asshole who's lost in your own world oh I, well like, no i mean but that is just the way I, that's something I the reason i got to know her was out of suspicion <laughs> fear and fury not love well can okay i i that i get that's that's your thing um but i mean do you that's how I was, though. I mean, I, all I cared about was video games always. If I, that's, I, mean, if I was at home. When you're a kid, you're supposed to only care about yourself. Well, that's so... Okay, so... <laughs> that hasn't changed, though, man, you know? I don't know. I think... I don't think that's true, first of all. I, but... I mean, like I said, I naturally care for others, but it's... I'm still... I can't actively be there for others. Kind of like you were saying with the, you know, you you can't be there for your friend. That's why you don't want to message her and yeah. let her know that you care and you're thinking about her. But that's only because you can't be there for, her. but you, you know, that doesn't mean you don't care. Yeah. Right? I don't want to let her know that I know about her aunt. Because then she might need me to have a longer conversation but about you, it. That's why I was saying you should, you should just let her know, look, I'm very sorry. And I don't I've, think that I can have... I can't do that, yeah. And that just pushing myself is... I don't know. I just not... I'm not at a mental place where I can do that right now. Yeah, I understand. But, I mean, after talking to you about it and saying it out loud, I feel like that's... I can probably just reach out to her now. Like, but, that's that's part of the, the thing is, like... I understand because it's the same thing at, to, to me... It reminds me of of the how are you. <laughs> you don't want to answer that shit. Yeah. Don't ask me. Don't ever ask, ask and me. And then also, what can I really do for <laughs> Like, her? unless you want the truth, don't ever ask me that. Dare you. How dare you ask me that question? <laughs> well, I can't hug her. I can't, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I can't bring her aunt back. Well, mm -hmm. All the things that she really needs, I can't do. Well, the, the thing is, though, um, just just letting someone know that you care and are thinking about them also does matter. And it doesn't change anything, but it matters. Yeah, it does. It like I, I, I hate. Here's here's the thing that's funny to me is like, it's when people tell me hi, uh, like if, if I was streaming specifically, if I'm streaming and someone com comes in and says I'm just here to say hi, I love mm -hmm. that they came to say hi, and I hate that that's the only reason that they came by. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I truly appreciate the fact that they came by to say hi, and it sucks that they can't stay. Yeah. So, but I still really do appreciate that hello. Like the, the drive-by hi? Yeah, I do appreciate that. Like, it sucks, but it's also cool. Like, you know, so that's kind of what it makes me think of is, you know, you, you cannot be there, unfortunately, you know, but but to let someone know that you care and are thinking about them, I think that does matter. Yeah. Also, when I read the message, it was 1.30 in the morning when I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And she could have been up. <laughs> she could have been asleep. I don't know. Because, like, some people just leave their phones on all night. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that she'll ignore me if she wants to. But Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's just like, when do I fucking contact her? And then I slept all the next day. And, like, anyway. <laughs> um. So the point is, like, I'll, 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 I'll message her. And all right. Know. But anyway, so uh, how we ended up in foster care. Yes, here we go. Here's the... <laughs>
<laughs> now, I'll tell you this real quick, because this will probably take at least another 20 to 30 minutes, probably. I'm assuming. I, I don't, I'm just guessing, but we're at an hour. We're at the We hour. are? Yeah. <laughs> That's all that bacon talk, I tell you. <laughs> no, so it's fine. Um, I mean, I don't mind if you're, if you, because like, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I mean, we already teased it in twice, like at the beginning yeah. of this podcast so, and the end of the So one. hopefully, if we do have a listener or two, um, this is going to be a, a bit of a story. It could take 20 to 30 minutes. It could be less, but I, mean, I would I would at least give us 20 to 30 minutes to... You have to do something just like... Um, pause and come back. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so... All right, so I'm seven, you're eight, Bubba's dead. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. This is the age of death. <laughs> How old are you? I'm dead years old. <laughs> um... It's been two weeks uh, since he died. Mom's uh, hopped up on meth. Um, I think it's a weekend because you, me, and Mom and Renz all piled. No, it was a weekday. Was it a weekday? I'm pretty sure. I think it was a. I think it was a week. Oh, I'm maybe. pretty sure because that school was open. That school was open. <laughs> yeah, at regular classes and stuff. It was open that I remember. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. For whatever reason, we end up uh, piling into the car. Um, and we I go think up. we're going to the park. We went to Dunsmore. Mm-hmm. We went to Dunsmore Park. Dunsmore Park. We're just going to the park to hang out. Is the park that has the kiddie pool, but it's only filled in summer, so it's such a depre- disappointment for the rest of the year because there's nothing else to do there for the I rest. There of was the the, the baseball field with the hill. We used to slide down yeah. the cardboard boxes. Okay, so we get it. That was fun. I would even roll down the, that hill without a box. Just roll down. I'd it. roll out down the hill without <laughs> a box, and I'd regret it because then I'd end up yeah. itchy. Super itchy and dirty, and yeah. Yeah, but it was fun. <laughs> itchy with green skin. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, so just wings and you know whatever. But the, I think oh, our yeah. favorite thing was the pool. Yeah. But the park was fun. I like. Yeah. That. Oh, they had a really cool teeter totter too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh. <laughs> It's like a group teeter totter. That was cool. <laughs> Not like one on one. Um, but anyway, so we get to the park. Mom's unpack. Okay. Oh, sorry. We, we I skipped the fun part. So we, <laughs> we, across from the park is a preschool. Um, it's recess. So there's a chain across the parking lot entrance because they're using the parking lot as the recess playground. Um, and Rents decides. Oh. Actually, he told me, mom said, Renz, and I think I remembered this later, but I had always blamed him for this. <laughs> She's like, Renz, pull into this parking lot. It does seem like something I would blame Renz for. And she, <laughs> I was furious at him for years. Uh, and finally, like, it wasn't until uh, he got on dialysis that I was like, why did you do that? <laughs> so random. And he's like, your mom told me to. <laughs> Prince so just Prince just pull in here, so he pulls in. To, this was a chained off area. Chained off area, and so he's like got the. We chain, actually drove through the chain. Right? The chain like goes up over the car. <laughs> yeah. and, this is inside of a school. Yeah. We went through the driveway with the chain that was across to block cars from going yeah. through. Yeah. Circled and we drove around through the chain. <laughs> circled around the parking lot. The teachers are moving children out of the way. <laughs> I don't remember the children being in front of the car though. It wasn't so much that they were in front of the cars that is that they he, were just making sure they because were he safe. did a circle. Yeah. First, the teachers moved the kids this way, and then they moved the kids this way. I don't remember that. To get out of the way of the car. Yeah. yeah. And it's all like two and three year olds. It's a fucking preschool. <laughs> so, uh, so and then he like exits the same way with the chain up over the car. Um, and like I'm scared, like because when the it chain was weird. Yeah. So it's... first of all, I'm just like he's just gonna run into that chain. It's gonna wreck the car. And then it didn't. It goes up over the hood, and I'm just like it's gonna break the the windshield. <laughs> And it doesn't. It just goes just up over head. I was like, it's it, going to yeah. break the back window. Because I'm familiar with glass. <laughs> and I'm not used to I'm thinking right of glass as like... I kept thinking the chain was going to do something. Yeah. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. And then we come back out and everything's fine. We go across the street. Mom's unpacking the picnic. Literally across from the preschool, we just drove through yeah. the chain. <laughs> we, so the cops, the cops roll up. Uh, and they get out and they're talking to mom and Renz. Calmly, too, if I oh, remember yeah. right. Yeah. And they're like, hey, you know, uh, there was a car fitting this description <laughs> that drove through a child's playground just about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> we just, we drove through school for no reason at all. And then we go across the street to the park. That's why we were there. <laughs> What the, did, did we even meth. know why mom wanted to It was meth. Away? They did meth before we got into the car. <laughs> like, I don't know why. What the hell, dude? 
So oh look, there's a chain of drive through. Let's so see they're like, through. they're like, no, Ossifer, we we have no 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 idea what you're talking about. That wasn't us. That sounds horrible. What terrible people would do that? <laughs> and by the way, you and I are just standing there because yeah. Yeah. the good parts of the park were down the hill. And Mom said she's like, go wherever you want, play, do whatever while we're sitting up this picnic. But stay in eyesight. Yeah, okay. And the park was all fucking hills. <laughs> and so the playground with the the, the merry-go-round and the teeter-totter was down a hill. Mm. And the and the uh, softball field was down a hill. So we're just standing there. <laughs> like, what do we do? F- climb a fucking tree? Yeah, like, weren't we near like a swing set, though? No! Or, oh, we were just near a barbecue or something? Yeah. <laughs> So it was like the picnic tables. There was fucking yeah, no, no okay. nothing to play around on. So we're just standing there, and then we're just watching the cops talk to mom and Renz. And then finally, like, the, Renz is just like he's they talking. Got arrested about, there. He's talking about no, no, he didn't. Man. Nope. So, uh, so Renz is talking about how he's just, he's Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, he did right he said yeah. he was jesus oh my gosh and mom's mom pipes in and i'm jesus's helper <laughs> finally uh my sister remembers most of the stuff far better than i ever it's could. because i've retold myself this story so many goddamn times because i couldn't fucking believe it the first time yeah. it happened yeah. um so uh so <laughs> so eventually it, tur- it it becomes clear to mom and Renz that the cops um, don't believe that they're about to be saved by Jesus Christ and his helper. So mom packs up the picnic. They put it back in the car. We all get in the car, including mom and Renz. And Renz starts driving at 10 miles an hour home. <laughs> which takes, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes because he's going 10 miles an hour. And the cop is... Jo- and we didn't live that far from the park. We kind of lived like Not, 20 minutes away. Yeah, like 15, yeah. 20 minutes away Not, just like driving at a regular close, speed. Though. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so, the, but we're going so slow that the cop at the beginning just runs up a, alongside the car and <laughs> knocks on the window. Rand rolls it down. <laughs> I like, don't remember this shit at all. How can I help you, Ossifer? <laughs> I keep saying Ossifer. Yeah, it's Ossifer. Ossifer. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't saying Ossifer. He wasn't yeah. drunk. He was high on meth. Crystal's just weird right now. Ossifer. <laughs> uh, officer. <laughs> How can I help you, officer? Um, I'm telling you, it's because we have no respect for God. <laughs> one of your best friends is a no, cop. I know. I love him, too. Okay. Uh, so uh, so he's like, could you please pull over, sir? And Renz is like, no, officer, I don't want to do that. And so he rolls the window back up. <laughs> we continue driving. Now, Mom <laughs> starts reading from the Bible. Oh, my gosh. I do not remember that. I, like, I'm screaming. I'm that, like, tell just... Renz to pull over. Because wow. he'll listen to her. I know he'll listen to her. Wow. I was like, tell him to pull, pull over, Renz. Tell him to pull over. And Mom finally turns around. She's like, Crystal, be quiet. <laughs> and she was so fucking insane that I just shut up. Oh, my God. I was just like, this is crazy. And then she starts wow. reading from the Bible. What I didn't realize at the time that she was carrying around her, the Bible and a broken cuckoo clock that she believed was the Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant? It's the thing in Indiana Jones that when you open it, it melts Nazis. <laughs> wow, I wish we had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really helpful these, this Holy day and crap. age. I'm, like, I, I, I remember a cuckoo clock, but I'm t- I wish I remember this stuff as well as you so do. So the so Ark... No, well, I remember being it, in the backseat, but I don't remember. Part like, of I, it you know. is that I remember it. Part of it is that I talked to her about it. And she oh, filled okay, in a lot of the okay, gaps. Yeah, yeah. And the whys. Mm-hmm. Like the meth, I didn't know she was on meth at the time. Mm, I did not know. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, man! So, she, so the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to be a an. Uh, Do you remember what she was reading in the Bible? No. Okay. Um, I'm very curious. Friends, what she was friends would probably remember. You can okay. ask him when he comes over in two days. <laughs> you probably would remember. <laughs> I think I mean, he, he might not if he was on that too, though. Well, I think it was specific. I think okay. I remember she remembered what she was reading, okay. but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I was like, I never learned her stories like forever because I just thought if I had a question, I could just re-ask her, you know. Mm. And you didn't know she was gonna die like an <laughs> asshole. Um, You're so, so stupid. Why would you? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Why wouldn't you know she'd die? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the Ark of the Covenant, the actual, the real like 
fabled thing is supposed to be a, an essence, a piece of an essence of God's spirit. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you die when you look at it is because you just, as, as a human, you can't, can't understand it. it. Okay. So it's not just the Nazis that die when they look at it. It's anybody who like opens it up okay. will die. <laughs> um, so she's the broken cuckoo clock. She thinks is Ark of the Covenant. So she's carrying around a broken cuckoo clock. She's got a Bible. She's reading from the Bible. We get home, we pull in <laughs> and, uh, and the cops, like they take runs out, uh, they and, had followed us the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we weren't well, going very fast. The whole time? I, I think, think so. Had, if they didn't have the siren on, they had the lights on. They the had whole lights time. on for sure, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and so and there was a train by the time we got home. Like it was started out with one cop I car. Forgot. There was at least a few. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> they take, <laughs> I forgot all they about get the rents out of the car. Of cops, yeah. Man. Oh my god. They get rents out of the car. And they put him on the ground and they're cuffing him and then they get mom on the... I, I don't know if she gets on the ground or not. When In my memory, because I talked about this later, I was so traumatized and I hated cops because in my memory I'd seen those like billy clubs that they have like strapped yeah. to their sides. Yeah. And I pictured them like taking them out and beating, the, beating her with it. And because I pictured that at that time like scared, like that was how I remembered it. And I talked to her later. She's like, no, like they put handcuffs on her, but they were very nice to her. Okay. Because she's white. We're white people. We're oh yeah. If it's not clear by the fact that none of us is dead. Uh, we're, yeah. we're gods. We're sorry to the black people. We are sorry. Um, and we're glad that this didn't happen to you because you would be dead. Um. Yes. So. Uh. So yeah. So. Um. So yeah. So they. They put mom. Oh. So we're in the back. We're still in the back seat. And oh, I. Yeah. I thought we were out by then. Nope. I'm hysterical hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, I've got you and me in the middle of the car. Cause usually we sit like you know, next Across to the door. The seats, yeah. So I've got you well, just stay in the middle. Just stay in the middle. They can't get us. They can't get us. <laughs> and finally like the cop. Oh, and, I don't even really remember that. You were just like, Jeez. okay. And like, <laughs> You were, you were just like, I guess if she wants me to stay in the middle of the car, I'll stay in the middle of the car. <laughs> Finally, the cop, like, he's like, what's your birthday? And he's just like, gets me to start talking. And he's like, can you come out of the car? So I get out of the car. Like, I let you go. And then you get out one side and I get out the other wow. side. And we all get in the, the back of the cop car with mom, who is handcuffed. We're not. I, I can't, man, I can't even barely remember that, too. That's crazy. Yeah. So we're in the back of the cop car. I can picture, like when we were in the driveway yeah like you know what's weird to me because hmm. the way you just i can i can picture having watched it all from outside of the car interesting yeah that's really weird because that's how i can picture it like i remember yeah. i can remember the driveway and the cops everywhere and them getting handcuffed and i can picture it from outside of the car so it's very strange yeah yeah, I mean, I don't know the full timeline on all this. Yeah, all I yeah. know is I was fucking yeah. traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that Renz was on the ground. And I th I thought Mom was on the ground getting beaten. I thought beaten so, too. At the time, but I don't Maybe know. Maybe not beaten, but I, I thought they put her on the ground as well. She might have been on the ground and they handcuffed her, I, but they didn't I beat her they put with her their the billy clubs. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, we, so we're all... Because they were resisting, but not like... They physically hardcore fighting were, back kind yeah, of a thing. Yeah, they were just more, like, chilled out. Like, like, I think they were, like, cussing at him, weren't they? I don't think so. Really? No. Fuck, what am I remembering? You could, you could be remembering, right? I don't remember that part. I remember when... I thought they were cussing him out. Not, like, again, not, like, physically fighting them, but cussing them out. What way would that be for Jesus and his helper to be behaving? Oh, sure. anyways. <laughs> Um, so we get in the back of the car, mom's got her hands like cuffed behind her and you and I are not cuffed, but we're on the back seat. Were we? And mom was looking around. Were we around. on each side of her? No, we were, she was on the left and we were both on the right. Okay. Um, and mom just looks around and she's just like, I was wondering what it would be like in the back of one of these. <laughs> and I remember asking. Hadn't she not been in one of those before? No. So she, funny. she, uh, she was white. So she, even though she oh, committed a that, lot of crimes, that's, that's true. she had never been arrested. Okay. And she wasn't actually arrested at this point. She was just detained. So yeah. she had the cuffs on, but she was never, like... Oh. Taken, driven somewhere. She's not arrested or, like, charged with anything. Yeah, okay. She, so she she was, like, always wondered what it would be like. <laughs> yeah, and I remember, I was like, why would you... That was such a stupid thing to say. And she's like, I had two hysterical children. I was trying to keep them calm, you know? So I had to be calm. <laughs> oh, my... That actually makes sense. <laughs> that act, That's kind of funny and messed up, but it makes sense. Oh, my gosh. Dude, that's so insane. Yeah. So uh, so then um, 
So then we ended up in foster care. So like a few hours later, we we went to spend the night with um that Armenian couple in Glendale, uh, who were adopting the kid that was already living there. Hmm. And we slept on the floor, and the and the man had a typewriter, but he would barely let me play with it. <laughs> And I was so furious because I, and I thought I would wait for him to go to bed so I would play with it, but he told me not to. He's like, I'm going to bed. Don't play with the typewriter. <laughs> it's not a toy. It's so funny that you want to like, play with the I was like, I know it's not a toy. I want to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> that's my sister, ladies and gentlemen. That's <laughs> that's straight up my sister right I was there. the I most adult six-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> she has always been uh, very special. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, That's funny. I yeah. want to write. I don't know, it's not a toy. I want to write a book, you bastard. <laughs> that was wrong with you. What else would you use a typewriter for? <laughs> I want to write important reports. <laughs> tap 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 tap. <laughs> wow, man. Uh, is there any more to that? Not that I remember. Like, no, because I don't remember. Like I can sort of tiny bit. Like I write. I remember the typewriter ish thing and i can remember the floor but i don't remember them as people mm. I, I don't remember they were very cold okay they well, were I mean, not so, yeah, okay my so memory sucks too though like they you know, didn't like... become i well part of it again is like me like um talking this about talking about this to mom and she mm. filled in a lot of blanks yeah. for me so they weren't and they didn't tell us this at the time but they weren't they weren't foster parents they were from armenia They'd come over here, they'd settled themselves, like started a business or something, and they were established, and so they wanted to adopt an Armenian child. They were child. looking into it. And the way that they got into it was through foster care. So he was a foster kid that they were about to adopt. How did we end up with them, though? Were they just the closest people that were adopting or whatever? They were literally, because we were like, okay, so Tahunga doesn't, Sunland Tahunga doesn't have their own police station. Glendale's the closest. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that, so, oh yeah. Yeah, I remember that now. So we were taken to the Glendale Police Station, so they're looking for foster families in the area. What's the closest one? And so they happened to have a floor for us to sleep on. It was the best they could do in that short time. Mm -hmm. So we were there for three days, three and a half days, I think. No, two, a week and a half. We were there for a week and a half. I don't Um, even remember them at all. I remember there was an apartment building next door that I think was for old people. And we would go over and play in the elevator and they would watch the old people would watch movies like on a on a, on a projector um do you remember that no you remember that no i remember you and the and uh the kids like sneaking over to watch the movie and i didn't want to be caught by an adult because i didn't want to get kicked out so i'd just play in the elevator and you guys would do whatever <laughs> and then i'd wander around I don't remember the projector at all. The really? Movie, yeah. It was like a room where it was where everybody would gather and watch the movie. But I was like, it, it's a bunch of old people. They're going to notice kids. <laughs> but they won't care. They're old. Like, you know, like we're just kids. What are they, we going to do? I didn't think at the time that they would assume that they were somebody's grandkids because mm. I had such an identity to my family that I thought it's obvious that I'm this person's child. Like they, that I thought that a stranger would know looking at me and mom mm. that I'm her daughter. Which they probably would because we looked yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't occur to me that it wouldn't be immediately obvious that... We didn't belong in an old people home? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. It wouldn't... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, because you could have been one of their grandchildren. It didn't occur to me that you would be mistaken for somebody else's grandchild. Mm-hmm. If you were seen by other old people. All right. So, wow. What a ride. <laughs> That is uh, mostly my sister's story of us. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, that's okay. No, so... no, I'm fine with that. I like I said, I, I a lot of that. I don't even remember the like you said the first people we stayed with. I don't. Even, I cannot remember them at all. Yeah. Like, at all. I don't. And I can barely picture the projector thing. But I think that's just me trying to picture it yeah. rather than actually remembering it. You know. Yeah. Well, there was literally nothing for us to do all day, but she yeah. just didn't want us inside. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyways, so there's our story. Yeah. I Well, that's kind of, like, why I want to do this podcast with you, is I want to be like, where were you? What do you remember? And so, and it's funny, so my, when my first sister was first... We, we've talked about this before we do these podcasts, and we'll finish this up here in a couple minutes. And um, This is... Wow. What a ride, man. <laughs> and it's funny, because this is not the first time we've talked about this. We've talked about it a couple times. Mm-hmm. Never really did a podcast where we do have a little bit more going on here. Um, but so the thing about it 
uh, and I, and anybody I've ever talked to in my streams and, and stuff or, you know, whatever, it's usually in my streams, that's usually when I talk about it, but, uh, I mean, I can't remember crap, you know, like, yeah. I don't remember anything, that's why I'm, the fact that I can picture our home before we left Ohio when I was four years old, the fact that I can picture it, and I can picture, um, I always forget what hand it was now. It was so oh, I think yeah. it was this one, but I, I can remember picturing the blood literally spurting out of my hand. <laughs> And I'm and I, so I don't remember. Mom would tell me that story. We, yeah. we can get that into that in another podcast. It'll just be a short one. But like she told me how calm I was, and even when they were stitching me up, like I was just watching them fascinated. But, <laughs> but I literally had blood just spurting out of my hand. Just you were not gushing. calm. You were not calm when they stitched you up after you got bit by that dog. Right. Yeah. And that was years later, though, wasn't it? It was years I think, later. I think I think I learned to fear things at that. Yeah. Point. <laughs> Well, because I remember just being, I, I remember I was in the hallway outside listening to you scream and I kept trying to go in the room because it's like, they're hurting him. They're hurting him. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so we do have more things. To talk. I was just saying like my memory is gen pretty terrible. So the part of the reason that I can tell the story from like more because nuance, you, like you said, you've talked about it repeatedly. Rehashed it so yeah. many times, especially in my own mind, because these are the stories like the face blindness story and mm -hmm. the um, the how we got into foster care story are the stories that kind of defined where my childhood went, went wrong and why I grew up so fucked up and scared all the time. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't trust that my own parents were my, my own parents. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. And I couldn't trust anybody after Dina fucked me up so bad because like... This was our cousin, one of our cousins. Yeah, I, I shared a room with her for over a year, and she was so insanely jealous and, like, so, like, psychologically traumatized from, like, two, uh, two uh, pedophile father figures. Um, at least two. So she was Between two and four. Up, but yeah, so, man, what a... <laughs> that she was uh... just incredibly cruel to me, and she, like, she controlled every second of my waking... And some of my sleeping time um, while I was there. And so between that and, like, the face blindness and the already, like, being kind of reticent about being around other at Before Bubba died, I didn't have a problem being around other people. I just didn't care to. <laughs> That's... What a trip, man. God. So, well, here's, here's something. <clears throat> As we finish this continuously, finishing our things. But um, I, I don't know. It seems to me that you were far more traumatized than I was from our childhood. So I think because I, I'm just going based on your behavior and our behavior was very different. Like I was as conformist as you can possibly get. Mm. And you just could not seem to rebel enough. And it's not on purpose. I don't I, I like mean, I don't go out of my way to. And be I wasn't, rebellious, I wasn't I mean? consciously like, I mean, I guess I was sort of consciously like, I have to be, I have to be perfect. Otherwise I'm going to be punished. I, mm. But like, I naturally don't accept control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> naturally. <laughs> I also had a theory because our dad was so um, cruel that you would get in trouble on purpose to like protect me and Bubba from, because if you were getting punished, I don't, I'll tell you what, in my mind, I, I never, well, yeah. But that's the thing, when you're that young, a lot of it is subconscious, mm. you know? Because me and Bubba were so much smaller, and you were pretty protective. When we were I don't remember that either. Mom said that you and I were inseparable. And yeah. that, like, if you... Well, I do remember that. She said that if you saw one kid coming around the corner, you knew the other one was right behind. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> see. Yeah, no, I mean, um, I've... It took me... I wasn't until my 30s when I recognized, like, and I, would, I started saying my sister has been my best friend my whole life. Um, I would think about it because people would talk about who's your best friend. People would talk about best friends all the time, yeah. you know. And I'm just like, and I always had a hard time with that because I had good friends, friends that I really I respected very much, and I but I was never really that close. Uh, Jonathan was probably the closest friend I had, so I do consider him my best friend. But even he wasn't as close as me and you, which is weird because we spent every day together for years, mm -hmm. all day, you know. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, but he, you know, but um. But I always had a. She, it always seemed so easy for people to talk about their best friends, and I didn't. I was like, who? I, the closest I could say was Jonathan, but my sister. And it took me a long time to recognize that. Though. And Jonathan wasn't even till high school. Yeah. Ex yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There was Mike when we, you were in junior high. He lived around the corner. 
with a red Was hat. that his name, Michael? Or no, yeah. there was Jesse. Jesse was the oh, guy yeah. right in our backyard, literally in our backyard. Yeah, because yeah. his backyard connected to our backyard. Wasn't it Michael and then Jesse? Michael like, was Michael... next door to him. Oh, okay. yeah. So Jesse was the one in our backyard, and then Michael was the one down. And Jesse I wasn't, was I wasn't as close with Michael as yeah, I was. Yeah, Michael Jesse. was kind of an asshole. Jesse was really sweet, <laughs> but I think Michael was. Like he became cooler. I think yeah, yeah. He had he red had, hair. Kind of had to grow on you and whatever. And, <laughs> he had and, red hair and yeah. he was kind of like aggressive. Yes. Yes. Um. Anyway, I like that. It's funny because like it, that opens up so many more other stories to talk about. But we're I, I we have to call it now, right? Yeah. Like we're at another hour and a half here. Yeah. Maybe, like extended again. Um. But I just feel weird because you, you when you when you have an intense like experience, you do have to like come down off. Of oh it. yes. So kind of normal. We can do that off this. Do you want? I, it's gonna be yeah. weird well, transition, mean, right? I yeah, also like, mean just for the listeners too. Oh, the like, no, screw the listeners. Like we, we just, don't even have listeners. I just told <laughs> just like kidding, two really like tra- trauma, tra- traumatic, and like well, that's stories. The, so so here's the thing too about that. The way my sister is describing that is, um, for me, it's it's really easy for me to just. Like right now, I could just go put a game on. I just could associate? go put a show on and just instantly switch off. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, but my sister, and this is something we've done in the past too, we, we, when we have conversations like this, we kind of have a cool off, like we a little bit to end it. You we should have saved the bacon for the oh, cool off. Period. Yes, we should have. <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, whatever, whatever, <laughs> man. Um, yeah, so I, I forgot about, I did forget about that. Mm-hmm. I did forget about the cool off kind of um, from the intense conversation, well, because that, that was pretty... Where I learned that, like man. <laughs> where I learned that, I took a creative writing class with Bart Edelman, and I say his name because I love him. Mm. Um, and he he said that there were in the seventies he had done um, intensive therapy sessions where like people would like be taken back into their childhoods and then have these intense recollections and then like it'd be intense for everybody in the like group. We just did. <laughs> And then, that was pretty intense, man. And then <laughs> the person would like wake up from their trance or whatever, and they'd be like, "All right, time for lunch, everybody." And then like nobody knew what to do with all that weird like intense energy <laughs> afterwards. You have to fucking cool down a little bit. That's funny. Well, and so part of that is part of that. It's interesting. That's part of our different way we approach things or see things and whatever is is like I said. It's so easy for me to just be like, "Boop," off to the next thing, whatever, whatever it is. Even though I feel it, mm-hmm. you know, because I. That was very intense. That was, uh, you know, um, but I don't know. I just shut off really easily. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a defense mechanism. Okay, that's the one of them. Okay. I remember once before I quit um, Age of Learning, I remember I had started on the Paxil and it got me calm enough to like, to like show up to work. But also I just remember after phones went off one day, I'm just sitting there for like 30 minutes, just with my hand on the mouse, staring at the screen, just not moving, just not thinking. Uh, and I'm just like, I should answer an email. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. All right. All right. Yeah, I think that's enough of a cool down. Um, if you need to cool down further, watch Makara Tours on um on YouTube, she's fantastic. M I C A R A H T E W E R S. She's so funny, um, and uh, she does great uh, sewing tutorials that are not informative at all, but are very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for spending time with us and getting to know us a little bit more in our history and whatever, for no real reason other than to hang out and chat and <laughs> share our stories. You know, yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? Because she just finished it off with a recommendation. Well, what was that again? Marca Torres? <laughs> My- <laughs> Makara Tours. Makara Tours. What a weird name. Um, sh- I sent you one of her videos and you watched part of it, I think. Okay. I forget. You got to send me that one video that you were telling me about earlier. Oh, yeah. Thought the, Slime. Was, like the fight, the fighting game. Um, oh, yeah. No politics or it's whatever. The, or so like it's a Mortal Kombat style arguments against raising the 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 minimum wage (laughs) the minimum wage thing what a stupid thing that is too because so many people defend that why would anybody argue against like raising well if you raise minimum wage you have to raise all the other prices and and, and yeah well so he he argues against all their they're all my favorite my favorite was his response to if you raise the minimum wage then these small business owners will have to go out of business and he goes 
Fuck you if you can't pay your employees yeah. a livable wage. That's the point. Is you like, should shut down. It's, it's what I, the other argument to that, too, is people are like, that's exactly, that's showing that your employer literally is exploiting their workers. On purpose. They're telling you when they, if they go bankrupt or they have to close business because they can't pay you, they're telling you that they are exploiting you. Yeah. Yeah. And people defend this stuff. It's yeah. insane. It, and that's. I'm telling you, man, we got to do another podcast on that because we'll go on for another oh, half yeah, hour yeah. at least. But, uh, yeah, so, all right, yeah, so there, because there is stuff. We'll, we'll figure this out for the next one. Okay, um, let's do our outro. Oh. So, uh, we haven't discussed this at all, no. but uh, we're just going to do a quick outro and then Jeremy will just uh, stop recording. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> thank you for listening to the Poor Rikes. We're very poor. This is our outro. Poor. Poor. Bye-bye. <laughs>